yesterday from soft released a $40 expansion to Elden Ring shadow of the earth tree and it's just a perfect example of if you're going to have DLC for a game how to do it I have no complaints so in order to even access the DLC you would have needed to get pretty far in the original story and you would have needed to have your character be fairly powerful to handle the new area. When you, um, when you install the DLC, you can't immediately access it on a new save. It's, um, it's meant to expand the original story. Uh, if you are prepared to go, then you, uh, then you venture into the realm of shadow to follow the last shard bearer, Mikula the Kind, and the story continues. Um, you meet some servants of the demigods that you slain in the, in the base game and the events are connected to the lands in between. So it's one of the more cohesive, um, DLC stories for, uh, like even a FromSoft game, but like, you know, it continues the story and uh, that's a reoccurring theme. Uh, if you enjoyed the base game of Elden Ring, you will really enjoy the DLC because it's more of the same and that's not a bad thing at all um when you uh, when you first enter the realm of shadows it, it you have that same just blow you know just get completely like blown away by the scope and scale of everything uh this time instead of um as many like flat open areas they went really vertical so almost at any moment you are seeing stuff off in the distance and just trying to like work out how you're going to get there. And uh, no matter like where you are, when you're above ground, you are constantly like just, there's always just this wonderful, like inviting like vista off in the distance where you're like, oh, I, I need to go see what that is. I need to go see what that is. You have like this, um, this pull to go off an adventure and um, like, and um, the, the DLC is arranged in a non-linear way where you can um, you can skip bosses or even miss them when you're like exploring an area and um, there's a lot hidden and um, it feels like they took notes on all of you know not that there was a lot of criticism for the base game it was it was amazing but they took a lot of the criticism to heart um, there was a lot of um, of the caves that kind of felt the same in the base game so they mixed it up a little um, and um, one, one thing that was like just really surprising is, um, is they have like this um, non-Euclidean um, like uh, dungeon where you, it just it just keeps going and you're like how how is this happening it, it um it really does like play on the idea of like this like fantasy place out of time where like everything feels like it could make sense but it just doesn't and um you know you you think you've reached the the depths and it just keeps going and and then uh when you reach the the depths you think okay um I'm at the end I'll just take a boring elevator ride back up no 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 just another completely like you just um breathtaking like open <laughs> vista area it's like no here there's more um the map i i can't i don't even know yet but it seems to be um at least a third of the original game map which you know is just crazy um but yeah um it's it's one of those um those games where you know you can rush it and you can get it get done kind of fast you can kind of mainline the bosses if that's what you want but for the people that really enjoy um adventuring and like taking their time and exploring they've they've put so much in and they've made an effort to make it more interesting there's a lot more loot placed around in the world there's a lot um they went vertical so there's a lot more of like slowly like sneaking up and exploring areas and um there and at any moment you it doesn't it doesn't like it still feels like open um you know even like um some of the dungeons don't feel as claustrophobic um and you know there's still there's still going to be moments where you're you're fighting some big thing with a lot of movement in a small room and, and that doesn't feel good 
Um, but um, for the most part, like you just constantly um, have this sense of exploration and wonder where you're trying to figure out um, like what's over there. Um, now, you know, um, they they did a lot. Um, they have reused some mobs from the base game, but I don't see that as a problem at all. It just makes it feel more cohesive. It makes it feel like you are continuing the main game. Um, like I, I've never liked it when the DLC is a completely different game just tacked on to an existing one. I like that the world feels connected and um, it feels like you're just going further <laughs> into the story instead of going somewhere else entirely. Um, so I, I didn't mind that at all. Um, and I, uh, I just, <laughs> I'm, I'm so happy, um, because, you know, lately, like, there's a, there's a $500 skin in League of Legends, the Ari skin, right? Um, you know, a, a single mount in the Diablo 4 store cost as much as this DLC, you know? Um, Bethesda, uh, thinks anybody still plays Starfield, and they've released, um, you know, <laughs> fan-made story mods for like three or four dollars each so you know like, um i'd been really kind of bummed out and disenfranchised recently um with uh, just how insane like um some video game prices were were being so it just feels so good to have such a just perfect like um you know if you enjoy Elden Ring, you get more Elden Ring. And this is exactly what the DLC is. It, it really feels worth it. It feels like it was worth the wait. It's definitely worth the money. And I am just so <laughs> excited. Um, I'm, I'm, I have no plans to rush it at all. I want to take my time <laughs> and explore um, every <laughs> crevice of, of this game. And I, um, I'm just so happy that... Uh, you know, um, it's really, it's really hard when you set your expectations kind of high. Um, you know, like, uh, the base game was so good that, uh, I was worried the DLC could be disappointing, but it's not. And it's like, it's such a good feeling. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I don't, I think the last time, um, I was like this impressed with like a DLC, uh, well, probably like Cyberpunk, uh, Liberty City or, um, or Blood and Wine for like The Witcher 3. But I mean, these, it's, these like really great games with like really great DLCs like are so few and far between that I just wanted to like take a moment and appreciate that um like FromSoft just completely came through with this one and um it's more of the game that you like um you know if uh, you you can't like I mean I'm sure you could but you're not really overpowered going into it and the bosses are a bit harder than they are in the base game and that's not a bad thing at all because you know if you are a person that played enough of the base game that you want to play the dlc then you want a bit more of a challenge you you are that you know that much um better at it and um you know <laughs> it's just um I, I don't know i don't have anything bad to say about it and um that's a really good feeling uh take care